Listen, you were, weren't you, the, the director of communications at Downing Street under the premiership of Boris Johnson? I imagine your, your old instincts are as sharp as they ever were. Listen to the way this is playing out. If you were in Downing Street now, how would you be feeling listening to that? I would say there's a very, very high, uh, you know, pain to be paid for any marginal gain, whatever they think that is, of scrapping this. And I think it's it's so high that I wouldn't do it because there are many aspects to this. One is the very direct thing of what is it like symbolically. It's like a symbol of leveling up. It's like a symbol of commitment to the north of England. Secondly, it creates jobs and opportunities. And as you know, the old boss Boris said the other day, you can actually see HS2 from space at the moment. This is underway, so you're rowing back. It's not mm. something theoretical down the line. And see, I just think that if you are asking for another five years in government, you've got to say that you're there for a reason. It's mm. not about managing the economy. It's not about, you know, dotting the I's and crossing the T's. It's about getting stuff done. And this is something I know the faults. I know the arguments for spending it on smaller railways and roads and doing potholes and all that. But in the end, it is something that if we can't do this, Boris used to say this as me. Imagine if we pulled the plug on Crossrail. It, the voices asking, advocating pulling the plug on Crossrail were really strong until about two years ago. And now you step into London, you go on the Elizabeth Line, it's there because people held their nerve, they got it done. It's something for Britain to be proud mm. of. And I think HS2 should be in the same category. Yeah, I mean, look, I don't know if Andy Street is, is going to resign, nor do you. I guess at this point, none of us really, really does. Andy Street may know, but we'll have to watch that thing unfold. But what a blow politically if that's what happened. Well, he is a great advert for the Conservative brand that he is a strong, independent man who puts the interest of his part of the world ahead of all else and digs in on principle. Now, I happen to think that this party that has shown an enormous capacity for self-harm, for you know pulling the rug under itself, has got to get behind the Prime Minister and support him. But at the same time, when it comes to big issues like this, you've got to have the debate. And if mm. the debate is not going the right way behind closed doors, sometimes you've got to have it in public just so people can hear you. And HS2, I think, is symbolic and it's important. And more widely, okay, so what do you make of Rishi Sunak's efforts to, to, to turn, a, turn a new chapter, to present himself as a, as a change from the past, away from the old short-termism, the chasing of the next headline, the failure to be honest. In other words, you could say uh, putting into, the, into history the politics of Boris Johnson. Yeah, well, I struggle with the idea of a change from the past because, you know, I sat around the table with Boris for seven months and Rishi was, you know, in the chair next to me pretty much. So, you know, there's, there's a, a, an element there where he's not a total change from the past. He was locked into most of the big decisions uh, that happened. But also, if you are interested in the long term, you don't project that by actually ditching HS2, by ditching long-term climate change policies, by actually ditching a nuclear program that when Boris left office had as a goal and an ambition and plans were being drawn to build eight nuclear power stations. That's not the long term. That's very short term mm. to chuck these things overboard in order to get gain today. But I like to think that this is part of a, an evolution and what Rishi Sunak is trying to do, and Jeremy Hunt put some of the flesh on the bones of this today, is starting to say, you have a government now that's got the space to be tr pragmatic, to look at things, to throw things overboard that are not great, but to start looking at things like welfare reform, because if you want to cut taxes, you have to sort of find savings. You have to do things differently. You mm. have to have better public services. You can't just sort of say, I want all this money splashed all over the shop and I want tax tax cuts. That's where the Tory party has become slightly infantile in the last few years, you know. So there is a return to corona politics, which I applaud, and I applaud the sort of approach in many ways, but some of the key central decisions like HS2, like the Green stuff, I think are dangerous. And when you look at the party, has this party got at least something of a death wish with some supporters of your old boss, but more well, the kindred spirits of Liz Truss. I wouldn't call them supporters of, of Liz Truss. I don't imagine them trying to push her towards number 10 Downing Street, whatever happens in the next election. But they do share that impulse for tax cuts, you know, serious tax cuts. And it's very discordant. It's not the message Rishi Sunak wants out there. It presents the image, quite a familiar one, of a party that's split, that act, that's at its own throat. I mean, how damaging is that? Do they have a death wish? Every conservative anywhere in the world could 
look in the mirror or look at any audience and say, I'm not comfortable with being part of a government that has you know, presided over the greatest tax burden in 70 years. So advocating tax cuts is, <laughs> it's a no-brainer, you know, of course. We don't want the tax burden to be this high. It wasn't this high under a Labour government. It is this high, by the way, because of what happened with the global pandemic, which, again, if people just... It wasn't a few crazy days and a few crazy decisions by Liz Truss. We actually paid a whole load of people. We paid a, a big G7 economy to be to not do anything for a long period of time. That's why we're struggling with the finances. So if we just leveled with people at that and say, but when we have the money, of course, we believe we should cut taxes. Others may not. Now, that's perfectly respectable. What I find sort of oh, depressing is people acting as if the next election is already lost. And the only game in town is to parade their credentials to sort of gather something from the spoils. The spoils of a lost election are not worth having. Mm. You are fighting for the crumbs rather than sitting at the table mm. trying to eat a decent meal. And if people just thought all, all hands to the pump, all shoulders to the wheel, whatever your metaphor is, look at the Rugby World Cup, look at how teams are coming together and supporting each other and looking after each other and backing each other. You know, if you had the kind of modus operandi of some people in this party at the Rugby World Cup, then... <laughs> you know, teams would not get very far. Right. There's a, a bit of rugby inspiration. 